Yes, I know, I know the camera is on today, guys, but we have to talk about something more interesting than my own face, although that is pretty interesting in and of itself. Today, we have to talk about the tuning coming in patch 10.1.5, which at this point gets closer and closer, by my estimates is less than a month away. This patch is bringing, besides some class tuning, it's also bringing a massive nerf, which will very likely, finally, once and for all, kill the primordial stones. That's right. So the announcement from Blizzard about this incoming patch is that the damage done by the primordial stones is going to be nerfed by 40%. This means that for more or less the majority, the vast majority of the few remaining specs that were still using the primordial stones, it is likely going to be replaced the moment the patch goes live. We have a pretty cool if I say so myself, a pretty cool informative video about the, the annulet and which specs are left using the annulet. The TLDR of the video is that basically all of the tanks are still using the annulet for damage in Mythic Plus and not much uh, so in the raid. All of the healers are using the annulet for damage in Mythic Plus and then for healing in the raid. And then a few ranged DPS are still using the amulet, while many more melee DPS are using the annulet with the gems for damage. So what Blizzard is also doing is, okay, we are nerfing the damage of this ring, but to, to compensate, to compensate some of the specs that were more reliant on the damage of this amulet, we are going to give out also some compensation buffs to some of the specs. And that is the point of today's video. Starting with the first two of the specs being tanks that get compensation buffs. One is Blood Death Knight, receiving 8% more damage done to all abilities, as well as then Vengeance Demon Hunter also gaining 4% more damage to all of the abilities. This disparity in the buff damage likely has to do with the fact that Blood DK is already quite below, quite far down in damage compared to Vengeance. So you're not buffing both specs equally, mostly because Vengeance was further ahead in the damage department compared to Blood. Druid. Druid gets a few changes tuning for 10.1.5. Blizzard has been doing some whole mana regeneration changes for the upcoming patch. Not that it's gonna matter too much for hybrid specs. A few damage increases go the way of Feral, like increasing the damage of Ferocious Bite by 5% or making Rampant Ferocity their Ferocious Bite splash damage talent now scale with mastery. But when it comes to Druid, the more relevant changes are to Guardian, which gets a 6% damage increase to all of their abilities, and more importantly, Resto Druid, which gets a 25% damage increase to all of the Druid's abilities. Now, if you feel like this number is too big for Resto Druid, that's because they are also changing Nature's Vigil. They are, they are nerfing the essentially damage cooldown of Restoration Druid in Nature's Vigil. So this isn't just the compensation damage for Druid because of the Annulet, it is also the compensation damage to Restoration Druid because of the Nature's Vigil change that will come in 10.1.5. That's why the number for Resto is so big. Changes to Evoker as well. So Evoker gets a, a cool addition, which won't be that powerful, but I guess it will make some healers more happy. Source of Magic, the talent that not many players used, can be useful to regen some mana to some of your friendly healers in the raid. Source of Magic increases the target's healing and damage done by 3%. So now it's also a 3% damage increase. Now, the weird part is that this remains an ability that you can only use on other healers. So the damage you're increasing is not very high because it's healer DPS and not DPS DPS. And also it's useless in Mythic Plus because you are the healer. So effectively, you can't actually use this as a preservation evoker in Mythic Plus. You can only use this as a devastation evoker in Mythic Plus. The other change is some extra quality of life for Evoker because previously these two talents right here, Draconic Legacy and Blast Furnace had two talent points. So making your fire breath last longer and giving you more stamina took two talents to get fully. Now with the addition of these two extra talents, 
potent mana to give you 3% more damage and healing from Source of Magic. And Regenerative Magic, which is a 3% leech talent, now you got one less talent to spend in Draconic Legacy and in Blast Furnace. So it's easier to move around now with just one point talents in the middle of your talent tree. As far, as far as the compensation goes, all spell and ability damage is increased by 10% for preservation evoker since evoker was also a healer using the amulet for for more damage you also have then more compensation changes this one this time is for monk this one is for brewmaster which gets ability damage increased by seven percent rising sun kick and blackout kick damage increased by 20 percent tiger palm and invoke news out the black ops damage increased by 50%. Brewmaster was amongst the strongest of the tanks to make use of the amulet and the one who gained the more damage increase from the amulet. So that is why we are getting higher numbers in terms of buffs for Brewmaster. Also though, there is a change for Brewmaster in 10.1.5 in the addition of a new talent. After Weapons of Order was fixed, TLDR nerfed, making it no longer scale with damage increases of non-spec specific effects like trinket effects, rings, enchants and whatnot, now Blizzard is offering you an alternative. It's offering you a choice next to Weapons of Order, which is press the advantage. So a passive in the background consistent damage increase over time rather than a single big huge cooldown like Weapons of Order. You can either choose now to go all out in a single burst window with weapons of order or to keep your damage higher over the period of a fight with press the advantage which is a cool it's a cool option it's cool to have the option to choose between the two it makes you more versatile it makes you more diverse as a spec for brewmaster talking about compensations still monk gets 10 percent more damage for mistweaver monks uh, that's Again, another healer spec using the amulet for, for damage, as well as Windwalker getting a pitiful 2% damage increase. This one is somewhat a bit weirder, we could say, because Windwalker was also one of the DPS specs using the amulet still. So I was expecting perhaps a little bit of a higher number when it came to, to buffing Windwalker monks. We have still plenty of 10.1.5 changes for the rework in the works for Holy Paladin, which we are skipping because that's not the point, and also because these things keep changing basically every week. The more relevant of the changes is that now all spells and ability damage is increased by 10% for Holy Paladin. You also have compensations for Prot Paladin, which gets 4% more damage increase, as well as Red Paladin, which gets a 2% damage increase after removing the amulet. Priests get a similar 10% damage increase, both Discipline and Holy gain 10% more damage increase. Subtlety Rogue also gets a compensation buff, the only one of the rogues at the moment receiving a 4% damage increase compensation buff. Elemental Shaman gets no compensation buffs. Then you have the changes to enhancement. These one are interesting changes, mostly because they are tuned around the fact that the Blizzard still sees too many shamans trying to use the tier one set from Vault and not enough the tier twos and not enough the tier set from Aberus. So they are further buffing your default standard abilities like Lavalash by 20% more damage, Ice Strike by 20% more damage and nerfing the tier one set from Vault giving you less, giving you 50% less haste per stack consumed compared to before, as well as significantly nerfing the set of Aberus as well. Now, the next two chain lightnings deal 20% increased damage instead of 100% increased damage, which is a massive nerf due to the fact that this was still being used and being very effective in single target, Blizzard apparently didn't like that Announcement Shaman was using Chain Lightning in single target, so now this is the nerf they receive. Talking about Shaman, the last one in the compensation buff category is Resto Shaman, of course, getting also a 10% damage increase. Of the last two classes receiving changes, there is only one spec left receiving any changes planned for 10.1.5 about this amulet nerf, which is Protection Warrior gaining 6% damage increase. Now, what might strike players as odd is the fact that the majority of the healer specs have all been buffed by a flat 10%. 
you have Resto Shaman, Discipline Priest, Holy Priest, Holy Paladin, and Mist Weaver Monk and Preservation Evoker all buffed by 10% in damage. The only one that's been buffed differently, as we mentioned, is Resto Druid with a 25% damage uh, correction, but that was because of a previous nerf. Now, what is weird about this change is, of course, that some of these healers were doing more damage because of a much larger benefit they were gaining from the amulet. For example, the amulet could be upwards of almost 30% of all the damage done by a holy priest. But it was only an 8% damage increase for a holy paladin. And now the result is that those damage increases have been nerfed by 40%. So the holy paladin is going to lose 3% damage, while the holy priest is going to be losing upwards of 10-12% to more damage, and they both get buffed for the same. This is clearly going to advantage the healer specs that already had high base damage. Specs with high base damage are Holy Paladin, Restoration Shaman in AoE and Discipline Priest, in particular in single target and in the raid. So those specs can benefit more from these changes compared to other healers. This is going to be effectively a larger nerf for the specs that had to lean more on these, on these borrowed powers in terms of DPS to catch up with the rest of the healers. Either way, either way, that's what awaits us in patch 10.1.5, where we can finally, fully get away from this amulet ring and start using a proper current season ring in our slot, which will be cool at the very least for me. So now in 10.1.5, we will likely see the full the full substitution of, of this ring before the next season comes out. But, but. With this out of the way, we are done for today. It's time to, to shut the lights off from this video. You can still, of course, support in plenty of other ways. You can like and comment down below. You can subscribe to the channel itself, of course. You can then also follow me over on my Twitter as well as follow me over on my stream on Twitch. So with these things out of the way, thank you guys again for watching. See you guys tomorrow. And in the meantime, what's left? All right, the blinds, the blinds are left.